Okay, so welcome to this fourth video on uh, the resting membrane potential and the Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation. So we're in the process of deriving the Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation. And to do that, what we've said is uh, that at equilibrium, at the, equi at the resting membrane potential, then what should be true is that the total movement of positive charge from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment should equal the total movement of charge from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment, i.e. Uh, these green movements, which are the movements from extracellular to intracellular, should equal these pink movements. Now, initially, the pink movements in the normal cell, the pink movements are going to be bigger than uh, the uh, green movements initially because uh, this concentration of potassium intracellularly is very, very high uh, and is going to, uh, you know, it's going to be bigger. It is going to give a big movement, a big net movement of potassium uh, into the extracellular compartment. However, as, uh, as um, what happens very quickly is that a few, a few positive ions will move into this extracellular component, building you up a positive electrical potential in the extracellular compartment and a negative electrical potential in the intracellular compartment. And that voltage is going to reduce these pink movements. It's going to make it more difficult for potassium and sodium ions on the intracellular compartment to move to the extracellular compartment. So, uh, depending on what the voltage is from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment, uh, then what we have now is uh, formulas for the movement of potassium uh, from the intracellular to the extracellular and the movement of sodium from the intracellular to the extracellular. What we're going to see is we're going to put these now in, back into this formula and then we'll insert in these constants which are the movements of potassium from the extracellular to the intracellular and the movement of sodium from the extracellular to, to the intracellular and we'll see what voltage is needed in order to make these two equate basically and then that will be our resting uh, membrane potential and then all we need to do is solve for the voltage. So now let's plug these two things back into here. So if we plug in the movement of potassium from the intracellular to the extracellular, that's equal to this. So we put in the permeability of potassium um, times the potassium concentration in the intracellular compartment times the exponential raised to the power of the charge on the proton, the voltage from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment, divided by the Boltzmann constant. Um, Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Okay, uh, so remember this is the fraction now of these molecules of these potassium ions that would move across the membrane that are going to have energy great enough to get across the membrane if the electrical potential difference from the extracellular to the intracellular is this. Okay, uh, now. Um, now we're going to add on the movement of sodium from the intracellular to the extracellular, which is this. And we'll replace in, 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 in place of putting in this um, probability that the energy is greater than or equal to that, we'll plug in that with what it actually is, which is this uh, exponential function here. So, plus uh, the permeability of sodium, permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to sodium, times the sodium concentration, intracellular intracellularly, uh, times the probability that the energy is greater than or equal to the value needed to uh, for all these ions to cross the membrane uh, at a certain voltage. So that's e to the power of e plus v e to i over the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Okay, and that's the pink side done now. So now let's just insert in what the green side is. So that's the movement of potassium from the extracellular to the intracellular, which is this value here. So that should equal the permeability of potassium, a permeability of the uh, membrane to potassium times the per potassium concentration extracellularly, uh, plus the movement of sodium from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment, which is this. So permeability of sodium times the sodium concentration extracellularly, and then, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if these two are going to equal each other, then that fixes this value of the voltage, basically. If this equation is going to be true, then there is some value of the voltage that will make it true, basically. And now what we want to do is work out what value of the voltage that is, because the value of the voltage across the uh, membrane of the cell that makes this true is the value is the resting membrane potential, is going to be the resting membrane potential. Because the way that we set this up, uh, these movements are going to be equal to one another when you're at resting membrane potential because that's the definition of resting membrane potential that the movement of positive charge is um, non-existent basically there is no net movement of positive charge across the membrane that's when you're at electro electrical equilibrium 
Okay, so now what we want to do is solve for the voltage. So firstly, let's factor out um, this term here, this exponential term, from uh, this uh, left-hand side, basically. So we get that the permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to potassium, and I'll move this up now, we don't need this anymore. Okay, so the permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to potassium times the potassium concentration intracellularly plus the permeability to sodium times the sodium concentration intracellularly times this, um, this exponential term, so the E to the power of E plus voltage from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment divided by the Boltzmann constant uh, times the temperature. So we've factored this pink term out and we've got this bracketed term, which is this term plus this term there. That should equal, and on this side we have the permeability of the membrane to potassium times the potassium concentration extracellularly plus the permeability to sodium times the sodium concentration extracellularly. Okay, and then what we can do is we can divide both sides by this uh, so that we get that e to the power of um, the charge on the proton times the voltage from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment divided by the Boltzmann constant times the temperature is equal to the permeability of potassium of the membrane to potassium times the potassium concentration extracellularly plus the permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to sodium times the sodium concentration extracellularly divided by the permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to potassium times the concentration of potassium intracellularly, so we're just dividing through by this bit here, and we get the permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to sodium times the sodium concentration intracellularly. Now all we need to do is take the natural logarithm of both sides, so the inverse of the exponential function. So if the exponential of this is equal to this, then this thing that you're taking uh, e to the power of is going to be equal to the natural logarithm of this side. So we get the e plus the voltage time from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment divided by the Boltzmann constant times temperature is equal to the natural logarithm of this great big thing here. And we're getting close now to the uh, Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation. Permeability of potassium times the potassium concentration extracellularly plus the permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to sodium times the sodium concentration extracellularly divided by the permeability of the membrane to potassium times the potassium concentration intracellularly plus the permeability of sodium times the sodium concentration intracellularly. Okay, so it's looking good. And now all we need to do is take these constants here to the other side, and then we've got the voltage, basically. We have solved for our voltage, which will make this expression true, will make the movement of ions uh, from the intracellular to the extracellular component e compartment equal uh, to the movement of ions from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. And that voltage is given by this formula, that the voltage uh, from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. So remember exactly what that means. It means the electrical potential different uh, electrical potential in the intracellular compartment minus the electrical potential in the extracellular compartment. So basically, if I draw a cell, here's the inside compartment, intracellular compartment. So this EI is the electrical potential in there, and this is EE, the electrical potential outside. So basically, it's saying if I go from the outside to the inside. What's the difference? How? What? What difference in electrical potential do I go through? And the inside is going to end up more negative than the outside. So you're going to go down. So you're going to get something like minus 65. Um, and basically, this is equal to, or equal to, uh, Kb T over the charge of the proton times the natural logarithm of. And usually sodium comes first. So we'll put sodium. We'll just put the sodium one first rather than the potassium one. Sodium concentration extracellularly plus the potassium permeability uh, times the potassium concentration extracellularly over uh, the sodium permeability of the semi-permeable membrane to sodium times the sodium concentration intracellularly plus the permeability of potassium times the potassium concentration intracellularly. Okay. Right, and now all that's left to do is discuss how we change these constants. So the more usual thing to see would be to see uh, 
this in at the front here, this bit's perfect. This natural logarithm term is perfect now, but this front bit is not in its usual form. Usually you would see this written as RT over the Faradayan constant. And basically, we're doing exactly the same thing that we did right at the end of the derivation of the Nernst equation. The Boltzmann constant is about uh, 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23. Uh, the Avogadrian constant is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23. If you multiply the Avogadrian constant by the Boltzmann constant, you get what is known as the universal gas constant, which is about 8.31. So you can imagine that if you multiply those together, you're going to get something around 8.31, because the 10 to the negative 23 cancels with the 10 to the 23, and then you're just taking 6 times 1.38, which is about 8.31. Okay, uh, so um, that's that. And then um, the... Uh, charge on the proton is approximately 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. If you multiply the charge of the proton by the Avogadrian constant, which tells you the charge on a mole of uh, protons, so this is the charge on an individual proton, the Avogadrian constant tells you how uh, is a number telling you what one mole is. So it's a number of particles. If you have this many particles, 6.023 times 10 to the 23 protons, what is the charge on them going to be? It's going to be one point. Well, it's going to be the charge on an individual one times the number you have. And basically, that's the Faradayan constant, which is about 96,000 coulombs. Uh, this is in coulombs, of course. OK, uh, so what we can then do, if we want to get from this to this, is we can multiply both the top and the bottom by the Avogadrian constant, like so. And then, basically, all you have to notice is, look, this Avogadrian constant times this charge on the proton is the Faradayan constant, and this Avogadrian constant times the Boltzmann constant is this universal gas constant. So you just replace them with their uh, appropriate things, and you get this RT over F, basically. And that is how you derive the, um, the, uh, relate the um, goldman hodgkin katz constant field equation. So it tells you the voltage from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment, and it's equal to RT over the Faradayan constant times the natural logarithm of the permeability of the sodium ion through the semi-permeable membrane times the sodium concentration on the extracellular uh, compartment plus, sorry, plus the pro permeability of the membrane to potassium times the potassium concentration extracellularly divided by the permeability to sodium of the membrane times the sodium concentration intracellularly plus the potassium permeability times the potassium concentration intracellularly. And that, if you plug the numbers in and you know the permeabilities, it gives you a very, very good approximation of what resting membrane potential is actually found to be uh, across a cell. Now, you might think, but aren't there other ions? And you are correct. There are other ions that can play a role. You can try, if you want. It's an interesting exercise to try and build a bigger equation, which takes into the account things like chloride or even calcium. If you do that, you're going to have to be very, very careful because chloride has a negative charge on it and calcium has plus two charge on it. Uh, so if you take into account things like that, uh, it's going to become, you're going to have to think through that you're going to have to think it through much more carefully because you have to remember that if a chloride anion moves in one direction, uh, that's the same as moving the a positive ion in the opposite of direction, basically. So its its role in the equations is, complete, is completely the opposite of where sodium and potassium were. Sodium and potassium was quite nice and easy because they both had the same charge on them, which was plus one. Okay, uh, so uh, that is the derivation of the goldman hodgkin katz constant field equation. As I say, it gives a very, very good approximation for what resting membrane potential is. Um, what I hope you understand from that is what, what, where this actually comes from and why, well, you don't need to understand why it does what it does. Uh, the derivation, hopefully, has given you that understanding. But if you understand what it means, that it is this point where the charge, the movement of charge is equal. And the really important concept is that it's not the point at which there is no net movement of sodium and no net movement of potassium. There is a net movement of sodium out of the cell, uh, sorry, into the cell, and there is a net movement of potassium out of the cell. It's just that though this is the point, this is the voltage at which those are completely equal and opposite. And that the role of the sodium-potassium pump is mainly just to reverse the net movement that you get. Because you're moving sodium into the cell and potassium out of the cell, the sodium-potassium pump's role is to reverse that, not 
lot to build up the resting potential. The resting potential is built up by physical chemistry.